welcome to All Things Moore County, Moore County's weekly radio show highlighting the many facets of the Sand Hills. That includes real estate, lifestyle, community and neighborhoods. And now from Four Properties, here's your host, Bill Sahadi. Good morning. Welcome to the talk show, All Things Moore County. Um, and welcome to the beginning of what's going to mark the first half of 2019 as quickly as it's gone. Um, we have a couple of um, real estate related shows coming up and we've had one or two in the past couple of weeks uh, which has not been our norm Um, 2019 has been a very active year in Moore County in the real estate market and um, we've had a lot of success stories there have been a lot of there's been a lot of drama (laughs) Um, And we're going to try to talk today a little bit about the key to successful real estate transactions, both on the buying and the selling end, because time and again, um, you know, 20 years in this business, it it teaches you that certain things are always going to work in your favor and and certain things could work against you. Um, I'm being joined today um, by a past guest who was just on a couple of weeks ago, and that's Laura Glaspie from Southern Trust who is a um, very respected local lender. And that show we did with uh, Michael McNamara was terrific on credit. But every time we talk about real estate, a lender should always have a seat at the table. Um, you're an integral part of a team, um, whether it's a, uh, with a buyer and a seller, um, whether you're pre, pre-approving a buyer um, or helping a seller move from here to somewhere else. Um, you should always be at the table. Welcome again. Thank you. Thank how you are, for having me. How are you? <coughs> Doing very well. Thank you. You getting tired of being on the show? Never. Good. Because we're going to pick your brain a lot today. Excellent. Um, and um, to your left is real estate broker Christian McCarthy from Four Properties, who has also been on the show. Um, and Christian has had a, a very eventful year, some drama, uh, which we're going to talk about today, some of the things that can go wrong. Um, and before I introduce my final guest, um, how many times, Christian, have I said to you, uh, when you're listing a home, uh, it's really difficult when you list homes with friends? A hundred you... times. Right. Right. Why do, why do you think that is? The pressure? The pressure? Oh, yeah. And people change when they're dealing with their house. Their right. personalities are completely different right. than when you're having coffee with them. Right. So. so when you're friendly with somebody and you get involved in a real estate transaction, mm-hmm. it can work fine. It can. But <laughs> it, could be, it can also be a minefield. It, yeah, absolutely. So we, uh, we took on a minefield, um, you and I, back in March, um, <laughs> when we were sitting with our friend John Tampa, who's our guest today. Um, and John and I have spoken over the years, and he's heard me talk about, you know, different stories and situations in real estate. And lo and behold, he is moving out of the area, and he decided to move up his um, move-out date about at least a year. Mm-hmm. Good morning. Good morning. How, how, are, how are you? I'm doing just great. Our friendship has survived the transaction. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, so you're going to stay. I hope you're, you feel that way. I do. Um, it's, it is always added pressure because... Um, Friends just create a different dynamic. Um, but th- you've learned a lot through the, uh, the sale, the successful sale of your home in Southern Pines, which actually is closing today. Yes. So congratulations. Thank you. Um, tell me, this process started back in March, early in March, didn't it? Yes. Walk me through Chapter 1, how, how we tried to get you prepared and... Um, in retrospect, some of the things that you did that you look back on now and say, I'm glad I, I followed that guidance. Yes. Um, w- once uh, my wife had determined that she was going to take a position in Winston-Salem, um, then it became abundantly clear that we needed to move as quickly as possible to sell the home. Right. Um, we were fortunate enough that the place where she's working has offered her a, a, an apartment to live in uh, until I sell the home here. Um, but basically, I've been down here during the week and then going up there <clears throat> and looking at homes up there and getting to know the area. 
Um, so this is not, uh, the buying and selling of a home is not really in my background and it's not an area of expertise for me. Uh, so I'd say the number one thing that I did is listen very carefully to what it was that you had to say and then as effectively as I could just follow through. Yeah. Um, and y you recommended um, to do several things uh, right off the bat and the uh, first was to get a pre-inspection uh, pre done on the home, mm -hmm. uh, which we did. And um, I've always taken pride in uh, taking care of the interior of the home and thought I was doing a pretty good job. But uh, um, the appraiser, who was uh, wonderful, John Pavan, uh, pointed out some the things inspector, that weren't the, in, uh, the mm -hmm. ins inspector, yeah. uh, some things that just weren't immediately obvious to my naked eye. Right. And uh, so I was confronted with a, a large number of things that needed to be addressed and, and addressed quickly. And then one of the things that I appreciated was you immediately had a list of service providers who could go after them. Mm -hmm. And you helped me figure out how to sequence them and, uh, and, and put them to work so that uh, with the goal being uh, with the pre-inspection that by the time the house actually went on the market that there really wouldn't be any uh, many surprises when it came out the other end and the yeah. uh, buyers wanted to do uh, an, an inspection. Yeah. Christian, when um, we sat down with John and Julie at their dining room table and we talked about a pre-inspection, not every seller responded <laughs> the way he did. No, not at all. I mean, not many sellers will actually do that and fix what <coughs> needs to be fixed. They don't want to put money into the home, but yet they want top dollar for the home. So it's it's hard for us to explain to them how important it is to get it done. So working with John was very simple. Um, John's wife said something to me I'll never forget, um, that John likes to laminate his to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> I that's, can see that. That's, yeah. a, that's a word picture I will never forget. <laughs> yeah. um, so I mean, if, he, had a, he had a folder, right, did, with, yes. all, with everything in it. But, but there's something about John that made him a great seller to work with, and that has to do with your background. Um, you were in corporate. Um, you like structure. You respect structure. And um, you're smart enough to say, you know what, this isn't my department, but I will execute. For, if you give me the, the game plan, I'll execute. Yes. Um, that's how you've worked your whole life, I think. Yes, yes. I um, I recognize uh, that there are certain things that I'm good at, and there's a lot that I do know, and any time that I'm uh, in an area that I'm, it's not my background, I like to <clears throat> surround myself with the best people yep. and then follow their advice. It's just, uh, it, it's always been a successful way for me to be in the world. So he literally lined up <clears throat> John Pavan, mm -hmm. the home inspector. John came in and found things that most sellers don't know are wrong with their home. Right. They think the home looks great, and John's did, but there are things in the crawl space, uh, mm -hmm. electrical panel boxes, maybe some window issues, plumbing leaks. Mm -hmm. And how can you negotiate a price on your home if you don't know the condition of that asset? Because you come to a price, and then the buyer has the right to have an um, inspection period, and then it's subject to a negotiation, even though the contract states it's an as-is purchase. In 99% of the cases, buyers and sellers work together to, to achieve a goal to get mm -hmm. to the finish line. So you were 100% prepared. Yes. Did you know, um, I don't think I told you this, do you know how many repairs he had on his list to do? after? I you know don't. what the buyer, the buyer did an inspection and came back with a repair request. How big was it? Um, one item. Hmm. What, what was, was it? it? What was it? Well, it was the what? Federal Pacific Electrical Panel. That's it. And uh, uh, I had asked the electrician who came to do the repair work about the panel, and he said, yes, every time I do an inspection, you'll see this flagged. And he said, I don't, you don't really need to, uh, to do it. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> the seller for the, or the, the buyer for uh, her own comfort really wanted to have it done, and that seemed reasonable to me. So we just went ahead and said yes. Yeah. But there was nothing else on the... Uh, no. Yeah. Laura, you get involved in um, contracts. Um, you're representing the buyer, and the repair issues that come up, and the negotiations become a drama beyond just the contract price. And you as a lender many times have to get involved in that process. How? 
Uh, yes, we, we try not to get involved with that process, not for our convenience, but for yours. The less the lender has involvement in that, the better for all parties. Right. But where it typically affects the lending side is sellers are limited how much they can contribute to a buyer. And certain repairs would be considered required by a lender mm -hmm. and certain wouldn't. So we want to not have to address that directly as a lender and leave it up to the parties to reconcile that between them. And it, there are different requirements with government loans and, mm -hmm. and non-government conventional Correct. loans, right? Correct, yes. Um, <clears throat> Christian, you're working on a, a situation. Look at her, look at her <laughs> face. This one is, is getting to her. Well, we call her ice. She's smooth. <laughs> so you are working through some repair estimates on a home where you're representing the buyer. Yeah. Um, seller was kind of caught off guard, but they were significant. And this is a, 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 a home that has been remodeled and renovated. Yes. Significant repairs that you've negotiated. Yes. A um, couple of pages. John Pravon also went and did it. He's excellent. Um, just like you said, crawl space issues. Um, it's a, it was an older home. I believe it was 1980s maybe, mm -hmm. uh, if I remember correctly. And they flipped it. But they left some details out, like covering the chimney. So bats made home and mm -hmm. feces. And mm -hmm. um, so just, and oh, and my client is, um, oh, I probably can't say, but a, uh, bats are a big deal to him. So right. it's, it's a big expense to remove bats and clean up the feces and urine. And so they left <clears> a, <throat> some stuff out. The uh, difference between that house mm -hmm. and John's was, uh, when John finished uh, Project A or Project B or mm -hmm. Project C, he would report to me, check, 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 write down that laminated to-do list. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> by the time we were ready to put that house on the market, we were ready to put lights around it, neon, <laughs> put Beetlejuice out there dancing around in the front yard saying this house is ready to go. Right. And um, it that wasn't. took so much of the drama off. But it that, did. so much of what you're working with right now with this buyer of yours i mean what they did to the home is beautiful they did a great job um but they definitely didn't have somebody come in and recheck what they missed what they did because mm -hmm. if they would have done that it would have saved us a lot of time and energy and stress um because now we have to deal with well we're over it now but we had to deal with the due diligence and right. working everything out and right uh the hot water heater was a huge deal the smell it's coming from it so it's still being worked out. It's a lot of drama. And the difference between the house you're working on and John's, John's was a cash purchase. Right. Yours, yeah. I think, is a VA yes. loan? Yes. Huh. So <laughs> Big Brother is sort of overlooking the whole transaction, yes. right? Yes. So how are you sleeping? Um, well, mm -hmm. I'm sleeping okay now because I know it's out of my control. It's in, as you said, the Big Brother's hands. There's nothing I can do, you know. There's something I can do. We're going to come back to you because there's another reason you might not sleep, and that we're going to <laughs> shift our gear towards pricing. Um, so condition of the home. If you know your home is in good shape mm -hmm. and you do everything you can to make it in good shape, it's easy to market that to a buyer or a buyer agent mm -hmm. because you have paperwork to support all the work that was done. Mm -hmm. You have a home inspection to share with a buyer and a buyer agent. And that gives them a ton of confidence. I think that was the case with yours. Yeah. We were even surprised that the buyer had a home inspection. I, I, I guess I wasn't. Uh, okay. I, I think I kind of um, thought that she, that she would. But it, one of the things that I learned from my corporate days is that a lot of people don't understand the difference between an expense and an investment. And I considered what needed to be done as an investment, not mm -hmm. that it was necessarily going to result in a higher price for the home, mm -hmm. but that it was going to make it more compelling and that it was going to take the drama out of it and make the sale happen more quickly. And with my wife living in Winston, that's really, that was really our goal. So it, it, all of those things made it more compelling. He speaks, he speaks like a focus broker, doesn't he? I know. He I mean, this is so rare. People don't know how rare this is right. <laughs> for a seller it's, to be like his this. license. He does. Yeah. I, I've already <laughs> suggested it to him. <laughs> um, um, so we priced your home. We talked a lot with you. Mm -hmm. at, uh, remember that dining room table conversation um, where Christian and I sat there and we went over the comps? 
And we also looked at something else that was really important that sometimes sellers overlook. We looked at the neighborhood and the competition. In other words, how many homes were like yours in that area that buyers could look at? Yes. You had no competition. And that gave us a little bit of um, a feeling of, um, you know, we can certainly price it at the higher end of the parameter that we had come up with. And we did. And because we priced it and could defend it and you had no competition, it seemed to work. It did. Right? I don't know what the uh, percentages were, but um, they were pretty close to the list price. And But you had no expenses at the end because of the right. home inspection. They're waving me to finish. Yeah, I'll, okay. You want me to finish? You're tired of hearing me? Okay. We're going to come back in the second set. We're talking about... Um, the key to successful real estate transactions uh, with our friend John Tampa, uh, Laura Glassby from Southern Trust, and real estate broker Ice McCarthy, Christian McCarthy. <laughs> we'll be right back. back to our um, our second set of um, all things Moore County talking with John Tampa um, John just sold his home here in Southern Pines um, went through was a great seller very proactive um, was very rewarding to work with you because um, everything that that we talked about you executed and it all worked it doesn't always all work but you increase the odds of having it work right yes um one of the things we talk about in our business and christian can tell you she hears us all the time managing expectations setting the table and always taking a big picture view mm -hmm. laura that's your business mm -hmm. what you do it's everything that we, i do right you have to set your clients big picture view and manage your expectations from day one mm -hmm. and we did that with john we try you know and we tried to explain some of the things that mm -hmm. could go wrong, but you never had a, that deer in the headlights look once. No. Right? Well, um, I just uh, I I mean, feel... We're, we're proud of you. We're, well, thanks. We're, yeah. <laughs> I just I feel grateful. so fortunate. Uh, I, you know, I've been grateful through this whole process, as I told you. It's been easy for me to keep a, a big picture point of view. The first house that I bought in 1977, I bought for $26,000. And uh, if m you could have told my young man self back then that I would be in this circumstance, living in a home like we are, purchasing a home like we are, mm -hmm. uh, I, I wouldn't have believed it. And so it's all... It's it's all just gratitude, and um, you know the expenses that you know you have to pay come and go. Uh, it's been a it's been a lifetime of of, um, of for, um, good fortune, and um, I just try to approach it from that point of view. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that made him such a good seller was when the offer came in. Um, the buyer, I think, would say. John was the best seller she's ever worked with because he was overly accommodating, highly organized, had produced paperwork, mm -hmm. receipts for work that was done. Talk about putting a buyer's mind at ease. Mm -hmm. um, you, um, it, you know, it reminds me of the truth. The more truth you give, the easier the transaction. The less truth you give, the more th the chances of that deer in the headlights look right. or suspicion mm -hmm. comes up. Right. Um, and it, 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 it robs you of good energy. Right. And I think it started with the, uh, the counter offer, uh, if you remember that. Um, Go, walk me through it. Well, um, the buyer wasn't aware that there was a $5,000 incentive. Oh, let's talk about that. Okay. We did put an incentive on the house because of the imminent move to Winston-Salem. And all of a sudden now, selling the house was important, but so was the timing. Right. Okay. And so the buyer wasn't aware of that incentive, and so she uh, offered the full asking price of the house. That's right. And I countered and said, in fairness, there's a $5,000 incentive, so my counter was to lower the price by $5,000 because it was the right thing to do. And they thought, this is a true story, the buyer agent thought the counter 
was increased by 5,000 so that he can give the five. And we said, no, the price is lowered by 5,000 based on what your client offered. That's, that's mm -hmm. integrity. Um, and unfortunately, that's unusual. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, it, but it, unfortunately it is, you know. I mean, um, you're in a situation where you could afford to sell, uh, which puts you head and shoulders above a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, but that was, I mean, that really did seal the deal, didn't mm -hmm. it? It did. So meanwhile, John has a contract on his house, and uh, he's going up to Winston-Salem on the weekends with Julie, and they're looking to, to buy a home. Mm -hmm. And I said, John, you really can't pull the trigger on, on a home until, A, you have a contract in hand, which he waited mm -hmm. for, and then you have to get through the due diligence period to know that you can start to pack your bags at least more reasonably. Right. Meanwhile, I introduced John to Laura um, before he had a contract. And can you tell me about your first interaction with John and how all that, <laughs> that went? It was awful, wasn't it? It, it was, was, it was terrible. Yeah, yeah. It was actually very confusing because he reacted as if he was going to take responsibility for his part and provide everything requested and in timely fashion and was pleasant and oh my God. It, was, it was a joyful interaction. <laughs> it was very surprising. Um, unusual. It's unusual. It's, it, you know, it's not hard to do the right thing, but you would think that it would be something that a lot of people would practice. He was prepared and organized for you before you had mm -hmm. to take an application? Absolutely prepared. Came with all documentation in hand, asked intelligent questions, <laughs> yes. and it, it, was, it was a joy. Really. It made my job easy, and he had plenty of questions, but that makes my job more enjoyable because... And you could tell he was listening to the answers. That's also unusual. That's very reassuring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I knew we had a good partnership from the very beginning. Yeah. Did he teach you how to laminate those lists? No, I didn't know about the laminated list, but, but I love the idea. Isn't that a yeah, pretty good word picture to describe mm -hmm. him? <laughs> yeah. Um, so now that he's, um, he, so he's an example of a perfect borrower. And, and Absolutely. Yeah. What, what are the things you, you look for? Everything you just said about John, and what are, what's typically, what are the mistakes that some borrowers make that delay the process for approval? The biggest mistake borrowers make is not <coughs> joining <coughs> me as a team. We are a team to get to the end. I'm basically the liaison between the underwriter and an approve, a final approval to close and the borrower. And it's up to me to help guide them. So if they see me as that guide, it goes a lot easier. Yeah. And then the reluctance to provide paperwork is the other one. One of the things we always say, Christian, um, to our buyers is to work with local lenders. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, because we have a relationship with them. I can email Laura on things that aren't even her loan, and she will email me back in five minutes. Um and working with non-local lenders, you do not get that at all. Um, the person I'm working with now, I email, and maybe three days later I will hear something. Um, mm -hmm. You almost have to email him and his boss to get a response. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually quite shocking to me because I'm so used to using Laura. Uh, I've been very spoiled. So <laughs> right. working with somebody else has just been, it's been horrible, yeah. to be honest. Buyers sometimes don't get the value of a local lender when you, when you first meet them. Mm -mm. They do, unfortunately, in hindsight, after the fact. Well, the problem is, is that when they call these places, they are wonderful. They really, you know, take, grab them and pull them into the process because they're so just... What do, you call um, that? what do you call that? Sales. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but then after they get them, that's it. You're truly a number out of a million. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and that's how my clients were treated. Things were late, ordered late. They needed something. They never told me they needed it. So they never reached out to me mm -hmm. um, until it was all late. Where Laura, she needs something. She emails me. I get it back toward that day. We, it's a mm -hmm. partnership. It, we are all working towards the same goal. And some of the big banks, they don't, it's not that way. Mm -hmm. But with John, um, he, you had all his information. Yes. He had a contingency. 
-hmm. His home had to close. So now his home is closed. So now he's full speed ahead. What do you need from him to move forward with the process on the home that he's purchasing? Sign closing statement from today, and then we'll be able to wrap it up with underwriting, send him his closing disclosure that he'll sign, and we're closing. When is you... When is your due diligence over in Winston-Salem? Uh, technically this coming Friday. Oh. Th this is perfect timing. Um, so you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. what, okay, so you have a closing actually pretty close to the closing on this property. Yes, we here. closed uh, a week from Friday, June 7th. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And we're early. We're ready early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can do it sooner. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things you did not have a problem with uh, was you had a cash buyer. We shared comps with the uh, buyer agent. They chose not to uh, have their home appraised. There was no need. The lender wasn't there. Um, Christian has a problem uh, situation with the same house with all the repairs where she, you question the value of the listing price you were able to negotiate the price significantly mm -hmm. down, but that appraisal just came back, didn't it? It did. And? It was short. And we don't know how much, do we? We don't. Um, there's a process where they give you time to appeal the appraiser's value um, by the listing agent giving us, us comps that we share with the loan officer. Um, so we don't know in the value until that process is over. So... Um, and there's another reason why you miss a local lender like, like Laura, yes. if there was an appraisal shortfall and that happens, I mean, you're working mm -hmm. on some right now, five, five mm -hmm. in the last week, it was three weeks ago, but it was during a 10 day period. Five came in short. Wow. The lowest shortage was 9,000. The lowest, the lowest shortage? Mm -hmm, the highest was 31000 Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. It was dramatic. I've, I've battled appraisal shortfalls. You know, I bat like 30 or 40%. It, they're hard to turn over. Mm -hmm. um, what are the options um, that the lender will have to pull another appraisal to review the comps that are submitted? The lender has the right... One of the... In the process, the lender does underwrite the appraisal right. in that they validate the comps through several processes. That's the main thing. That's why when I receive an appraisal, I always say we don't have final approval on it yet because the value is not established until that review is done. But in the shortfall, they have to wait for the comps to be presented to the underwriter, I mean to the appraiser. Once the appraiser submits the appraisal, the underwriter still has to look at it. So it's going to be days out before you probably know the real value. The real value, <clears throat> or was it even accepted? Correct. Yeah. I um, before you wrap me up, um, I want to read an email that I got uh, last Wednesday from a couple of Laura's clients. Um, they're sending this to me. Uh, Laura was absolutely wonderful to work with during our home buying process. We could not be more pleased with our experience with her. She was quick to respond to emails and phone calls, even on evenings and weekends, important. We had many, many questions as we were somewhat ignorant to loans, and Laura gave us easy-to-follow instructions, simple yet informative answers, very important. Mm -hmm. um, she seemed to remain one or two steps, I'm going to cry. She mm -hmm. seemed to remain one or two steps ahead of us so that we never missed a process or deadline, important. We have a three-year-old and a six-month-old, and a lot of change took place in the short amount of time for our family, but Laura made this part of our transition simple and easy. She ended each conversation with a smile, which gave us peace that all was going well. We highly recommend Laura Glassby to anyone looking for a fabulous loan officer counselor. Thank you, Laura, for all your help. We would choose you all over again. Aww. Thank you for sharing that. Wow. Sure. That's sweet. Thank you. Uh, this is All Things More Candy. We'll be right back. Aww. Oh, no, you can tell that on the air. I can? Sure. So uh, we're back on the air. This is our third set um, talking about uh, 
what what makes a successful real estate transaction and to make part of that transaction even smoother what makes a loan process um, move on all eight cylinders but I asked John the other day jokingly I said to him Lauren don't take this the wrong way I said so John because he hasn't sold a house in you know how many years has it been mm. 14? Yeah. Something. Yeah, the the world, has, world. world has changed. That's when you purchased your home, right? Yes. So I said, what do you think of the loan process? Um, as organized as you are, and, and uh, you likened it to a gastroenterology <laughs> term. Yes. I uh, Can I use the word? Yeah. I, I said, uh, it reminds me of my two colonoscopies. <laughs> I said, uh, I, 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 found, I found the process to be surprisingly quick. Um, quite invasive, yeah. Um, relatively painless, right? And everybody was really nice to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I printed that. You did. Yeah, it's on my bulletin board. Mm-hmm. Um, That's funny. He, he um, perfect. He, one of the things that made him a good borrower, and I'm asking the question, was it the fact that he would ask questions out of curiosity and not judgment? Yes, that, that definitely played into it. He literally wanted to have the answers to the questions as opposed to mm-hmm. putting with the attempt to put someone on the defense, which I ignore usually. It's my job to calm people down regardless of what they're, how they're delivering questions to me. But and John clearly wanted to know answers to questions. I gave the answers. We moved on mm-hmm. to either that that was that or he had more questions. You were going to say? That's but, that's... That's that's my recall too. Yeah, but your antenna is always up. Yes. Because you have to figure out what's the best way to speak uh, to the client in front of you. How yes. to speak to someone else who's listening. That's exhausting. Yes, and and hear what they're really trying to say or what they're really trying to ask. Uh-huh. That's hard. You told me you you're really good at learning people's personalities mm-hmm. very quickly mm-hmm. and working around that. Yes. That's I'm still yes. learning that. I pay attention from. Uh, Literally in the first probably two sentences, I can figure out really enough where I know how to talk with people. Mm. It's interesting. If Christian came to you to, for a loan, <laughs> would you size her up for me? <clears throat> you, you know her now. The best. Oh, Christian, she she's a wild card though. <laughs> Christian has a, a different service than you. Yeah, Christian would be someone that I could tell is extremely organized. Right. Similar to John, I know that when I ask her for something, she gives it no questions asked other than reasonable questions. Right. But she's spunky and has a spark. Yep. So that's how I would have sized her up in the first two sentences. Mm-hmm. How about me? You? Yeah. Hmm. Mm. You're complicated. <laughs> um, I am. She's right. She's 100% right. Um, Many people no, say if that. I, <laughs> that's if you're a borrower, I would say you are not looking for any nonsense. You will resist documentation and give comments on how ridiculous it is <laughs> repeatedly. And so I need to make sure she I would. tend to that emotion. Right. That's exactly that's, right. That's the one thing that brings emotion out in Bill. <laughs> that, she's 100% right. Yeah. Um, y- 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 I'm not as organized as John. I, I'm, mm. I, I try to be. I'm organized in a different way. You are organized. In You're very, very organized. Way. You are. But in a different way. Mm-hmm. And um, But, yeah. Patience for red lights, patience for letters of clarification for documentation that you already have. And no, I mean, I don't get it. But I have to understand that my buyers have to go through that, and I have to be empathetic to them, and I am, but it's not me. Mm-hmm. And um, I just tell people, please just bite your tongue, bite your tongue, be obedient, do what you need to do. This is not a democracy. Get through it. Uh, he, he was a breeze. You were... Uh, well, I, I just <clears throat> operated under the assumption that she's a professional, and if she asks me for information, there must be a good reason why she needs it, and my job is to get it to her to make everybody's life a lot easier. And that's what I tell my buyers. Yeah. I think I'm opposite of you. I don't feel bad for them at all. You want the loan? Listen to Laura. <laughs> this yeah. is how you get the loan. It helps. It, it helps me. I'm exhausted when I have to explain to someone in great detail why I need something, right. which I do it regularly. If I, I'm sure you if do. If someone wants to know why, I, I'm obligated to tell them, and I, and I have empathy. I've been on the receiving end of 
mm-hmm. having to provide documentation I thought was ridiculous. So I do feel inclined to explain and sometimes over explain so that people mm-hmm. can feel at ease and know we're not trying to scare them. And sometimes people are scared. They think they won't get approved. So I try to take that out of the mm-hmm. equation. But when the questions don't come nonstop about, well, why do you need a bank statement in this format and not that format? It's, it makes it where I can do a lot more work in a lot less time. Yeah, and see, I tell them in a, in a jokey mm-hmm. manner. I'm not nasty, obviously, but I say she's going to ask you everything but your blood. Mm-hmm. She's going to need everything from you. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I hope I prepare them so when they come to you, they're not shocked when you're, you are asking for everything helps. but their blood. You, you both prepare them very well. Another thing is I explain to clients I'm, I need more p- paperwork, hopefully, than what I need to turn in. Because I want to turn in a perfect packet to the underwriter. Mm-hmm. I want to streamline it. So when the underwriter looks at it, they see it. I go, check, moving on. If they stop at something, the longer an underwriter looks at a file, the more they'll find. <laughs> right. There, there's no way to describe the red tape that Mm-mm. people have to go through sometimes with Laura and with Christy. And if I'm with a, a buyer, they're asking for, can we have this middle initial, uh, this middle name changed? Uh, little things. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a missing pay stub. It gets so minute, and they can't move the f- pro- the file forward without it. Right. And she, poor thing, has to ask for it. And she knows with me, she's going to get. <sighs> okay. What What do you need? That's why Christy asks now. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> she's right. We We fight so hard for our clients, and yet it it, it tends to. We feel like, oh, my God, it slows us. It just takes the adrenaline right out of us. Mm-hmm. But if we don't do it, I have to hang up and say, I'll call you back. I'll call her back. Okay, what do you need? And then I'm more, you know, compliant, right? Right. <laughs> but you always do comply. You always help. Yeah, but I, I have to vent, I guess. And we work really hard to not bother people for paperwork. We, we do a lot of online right. research. We do a lot of trying to find a way around it. We really don't want to bother people. But sometimes we don't have a choice. Right. Um, we've talked about a lot of things today. And you said something, John, um, that indirectly um, brings up another point. You talked about you were working with Laura. She was a professional. She was referred to you by me. Um, one of the things that a good real estate broker can do is have a pool of people in their uh, their posse, so to speak, where they can refer out and it's like giving a personal referral. Christian and I, have, we share a lot of the same contractors. Mm-hmm. And when you do, you, you know when you're giving the best, it's only going to help the situation move along. Mm-hmm. And it, the, people, the people that you sent my way um, were just absolutely remarkable. Uh, they were true professionals. They were human beings. Um, they were right. pleasant to work with. Right. Um, and uh, I have enormous respect for every single one of them. Right. You, you've learned, a, you've actually learned a lot I during have. this whole process. Yes. Just sort I of enjoyed like it. from afar, but it was also your house, so it was yeah. intimate at the yes. same time. I just decided I was going to immerse myself in this. It's a world that uh, all of my degrees are in the humanities, and this is not my background. And I just found it to be so interesting that I was going to just uh, take it upon myself to learn something new. Yeah. Um, we talk about. Um, advice sometimes we talk about it in terms of the theory of the best and the saying goes you know the home in the best condition in the best location and at the best price has the best chance to procure an offer in the shortest period of time that's a very important statement it's not a promise it's like you you take the temperature of your your seller and say are you willing to increase your odds or not, you took it, you know, you took the whole thing and did it right. And I think the house went under contract in like 30, 40 days. It was, it was very quick. I mean, we started this process um, March 18th, I think, is when the uh, house went on the market. And, yeah. you know, here we are closing today, and uh, yeah. we have another closing coming up next week. I'm grateful. Yeah. Um, and working back-to-back, um is important too because you had to struggle we had to struggle with the um the time period right 
uh, about how do you start looking for homes if yours is under contract but you can't pull the trigger. Right. It's it's frustrating. But you looked at homes. But oh yes. Couldn't do anything. Yes, I. Uh, by the time we had a uh, uh, an offer on our house, uh, we had a short list that we went through, and we had it down to just a few homes. And if you would have told me you have to live in any one of them, I would have been okay, great. So uh, it made it very easy. So we were able to make an offer uh, the very next day, uh, and. And with the pre-approval from Laura, uh, it just made that whole process so much easier as well. Yeah. You got a lot more respect for the fact that you had a contract in hand yeah. in making an offer as opposed to just having your home on the market. Right. Hoping for the best. Yes. Yeah. Um, Laura, um, we have you on a lot. Um, there's a reason I think we do. We talk about credit. Um, we talk about documentation. We talk about prepping um, buyers. But you have developed um, good working relationships with some of the top brokers in the area, and they do a lot of repeat business with you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because? Um, I think because I care about the transaction <clears throat> going well for all parties and try to be the glue when there isn't glue. I, I think that's pro- my, my assumption would be that. Yeah. I don't like there to be stress that doesn't need to be there. And what is your view of um, the real estate brokers that you work with? Um, what are the things you look for? What are the attributes that you look for in a broker? Um, um, communication. Just be direct. Tell me what you need. Don't dress it up. Just tell me exactly what you need and, and give me a little precursor on the client and done. That's <laughs> It's really the most important thing. So if we're asking for things um, or if we're communicating, we don't have to worry about stepping on toes. Mm-mm. Just no, get to I'd the rather point. Just step on my toes. The more I know, the better. Right. I use that expression mm-hmm. for you. <laughs> you say that sometimes. Oh, my gosh, I don't want to step on someone's toes. Step on we toes. step on people's toes yeah. because we have to get from here to there. Mm-hmm. And, and, and um, um, But you're, you're good at it. I mean, you can now put spikes on and it's okay. Mm-hmm. Um John, we, um, you know, the reality is you've sold your home. It was very successful, but you're moving to Winston-Salem. You've been here 14 or 15 years, um, and um, you're closing in about a week or two. But um, I've been in business 20 years, and I've enjoyed this process as much as you have. Um, in spite of the fact that you're a friend and there was added pressure, you never saw that from me, I don't think. I don't think so. Okay, good. Because I would hide it and I would share it with Christian every other day. I would say, oh my gosh. <laughs> and I was trying not to be high maintenance on my end either. And you weren't. I mean, um, we, we were both very respectful of the process. And you just you know, would go, go with what we got and you dance with who brung you. and um, But all successful. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll, we'll miss you, but maybe you'll come back and um, there'll be other reasons to do um, radio shows. This is not the first time you've been on the show. No, I've been on many times and uh, I have so many friendships here. I'm going to be coming back regularly. I like all my doctors and dentists and nurses and everybody. And uh, I'm going to volunteer occasionally where I've been volunteering and uh, come back and we'll go out and have fun together. And and, and we have you coming in to um, speak to our brokers. Yes. Um, Next week, before you leave, we're going to call it his um, the John Tampa farewell tour, <laughs> and you got you got a VIP seat. All right, um, John, thanks for joining us. What a pleasure! Thank you, Christian McCarthy. Great guest. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure, Laura Glassby. We're going to see you again down the road. Love working with you. Thank um, you. And I'm not afraid to send you relatives, friends, or mm-hmm. difficult clients. Well, thank you. It. it puts no pressure on me at all. I know. <laughs> all the same I know. Um, I hope for those of you who are uh, looking to buy a home or, or thinking of selling a home, some of the uh, points we made today <laughs> might help you in the way you think uh, to get you from here to there. It's not <clears throat> automatic, but you can certainly make it a lot easier on yourself. Um, this is uh, All Things More County. Thanks for listening.